I think there's this other layer of, of language that goes on with, with music, you know, that you connect with people on a, a deeper level. You're able to touch them in some way, you know, beyond the words you're saying, beyond the music you're playing. I'm hoping that it's a give and take experience, that other people are able to experience some type of catharsis. You know, maybe our music is a vehicle for that, that kind of give and take, that relationship. So I, I hope that's the case. We don't ever phone it in. It's it's always very real where what we do. And I think we bring a lot of passion to our, our songs and to our shows. And and it's a little bit of a cathartic experience I think for, for us. I really need to be performing and, and making music in order, I, I, I do purge a lot, Mike's right when he said I purge a lot that way, I do, and I always just feel really grateful that I have a place to put it. Well you have that connection with the audience that helps, I mean it's not like, it's not all about you because you're connecting with somebody. I really do get unnerved, um, you know it's been two or three weeks and I start getting really uptight and antsy and you know these guys will tease me like yeah you really need a show. And it's true, it's exactly, it's like, it's like the medicine I need in order to get my shit back together. Well, Missy's never missed a show. Have in you... fact, the very first Breach show I ever played, Missy had major eye surgery, I think three days before, and I think she wasn't supposed to do anything for a month. I had uh, a detached retina in my left eye, which I had to have uh, a buckle and 12 permanent stitches that hold my eyeball together, and then I had to have cryogenic sealing. They decided just to do both eyes at the same time since I had to be have my head sandbagged for a month anyway. But because she never cancels the show, she had to, the show must go on, even though the show would go on with complete full eye patches and on heavy drugs. Missy gets a little bit more of the itch to um, perform, mm -hmm. and I probably get it more to record. You're really nothing till I make you mad. I think tension is often, almost never good while it's happening, but it always produces something interesting. So we won't always agree on you know, the way a part should go, or how many times to repeat something, or whether something works, or whether it doesn't work, or whether you know this should be in a minor key or a major key, or you know. Yeah, it might get heated. We might both leave in tears. <laughs> well, our bass player, he was married to a Swedish woman, and. She inherited a reindeer farm in Sweden. She, um, her dad died, so there he was, finishing the last of his bass parts, and uh, and then moments later we took him in the car to the airport and off to Sweden for him. Then our drummer, our, our drummer finished the album, but then he quit and um, started painting. You know. I got pregnant. The first three months were kind of hard for me. I was really pushing myself. Um, I was really exhausted and I was really nauseous. Mike was really good about being the one who would say, Missy, we really need to get this album done. We, you know, we really need to focus. But there did become a point when like the only thing left to do were the vocals. And I would go in and I'd push myself, but then I'd feel like, you know what, this is, this is, an, I, I, I sound tired, I don't, I'm not in the moment, I need to do this when I'm feeling better, or, you know. I tend to work things out in songs, so I don't tend to write about, like, really happy things, or joyous events. I tend to, to write about things that I need to work through. But, you know, there's something very vulnerable about that, and it makes me feel a little vulnerable, a little, you know, but it's not like I have to be with them when they're reading the lyrics. Sometimes I'll write a song, and this happened, I think, more when I was a little younger, but I'll write a song, people would ask me about it, and I'd say, oh, you know, it's about this girl, and blah, blah. And then I would realize that 
you know, many years later that that girl was really me. But at the time I was so close to it, I didn't see it. When I came to the guitar solo, um, I played a solo a couple different times and it just didn't seem to work for whatever reason. And uh, Missy came up with the idea of, hey, just play two guitar solos simultaneously. So we just, through trial and error, just started to put little ga gaps in between uh, parts of the solo so that the two different solos kind of trade off and sort of complement each other rather than just bumping into each other all the time. Here's one of them. And that goes into the next verse. So here is the other solo. 